So let's look at an overview of the energy flow and chemical cycling in ecosystems. So this is basically how photosynthesis and cellular respiration are connected, the molecules that go between each, as well as the energy that comes into and out of uh, the system. Overall, this is a big uh, cycle. So we have processes that do conversions between the two. There are two molecules that come into this process and two that come out. There are other products that are produced and cycle with between, but these are the overall products and reactants, which then you can see the reactants become products, and then the products are now reactants, and they become products, and the products are now reactants, and it just goes back and forth. We'll put, um, we can put them in either direction, but we'll put photosynthesis on the top. And we'll put cellular respiration on the bottom. Now it could be drawn the other way. You have to pay attention to how it's drawn because that changes the inputs and outputs, their positions. So now let's think about the types of organisms that uh, do photosynthesis. I think the one we're most familiar with is plants, which is true. Uh, we also have some protists. We kind of collectively call them algae. They're highly diverse, but they all do photosynthesis. Then we have some types of bacteria called cyanobacteria, blue-green bacteria, as well as some sorts of archaea doing photosynthesis. So all these organisms that can photosynthesize are called autotrophs, or autotrophic is how you describe them. They can make their own food. So they don't eat other organisms, they just make their own carbon compounds and build their bodies from there. Thinking about cellular respiration, most organisms do cellular respiration, including animals, which remember includes us. Plants also do cellular respiration. Many fungi can do cellular respiration. Uh, what we call aerobic bacteria and aerobic archaea as well. We also have many types of protists that are going to do cellular respiration as well. So you might say, well, I know bacteria don't have these complex membrane-bound organelles, so how are they doing cellular respiration? Because I think most of us are familiar with the, in the eukaryotes, it happens in the mitochondria. But in prokaryotes, there are actually infoldings of the cell membrane. And I'll do PM for plasma membrane or cell membrane. And that's where this cellular respiration occurs. Same thing actually goes for our photosynthetic organisms. In eukaryotes, that's going to happen in the chloroplast. In prokaryotes, that will happen again in infoldings of the plasma membrane, cell membrane. Looking to the inputs and outputs molecularly of these processes, I think it's probably easiest to start with cellular respiration since that's something that humans perform and we can think of what do we know about ourselves. Um, so if you think of what you need to do to survive, one of the obvious things you need to do is to breathe, right? And the reason, uh, one of the things that you need to get primarily is oxygen. So let's say oxygen is an input into cellular respiration process. The other thing you need to do to survive is to eat. And so I'm gonna call food carbon compounds to make it generalized. So carbon compounds can be any of your large organic molecules or smaller molecules that can go into cellular respiration and be used in order to make the products. We know that one of the main products of cellular respiration, kind of like the reason that it's done, is to make ATP which is a form of chemical energy. We can actually also classify the carbon compounds food as chemical energy, energy in the bonds of those compounds. So you can see this energy conversion here, chemical energy in food to chemical energy in ATP. So let's look at the molecular conversions. So our oxygen goes in and our food goes in. So what comes out? Well, we know when we breathe out, we release carbon dioxide. And the way you can remember which one uh, it goes to is that 
our carbon compounds go to our carbon dioxide. So it's kind of funny, the food you eat actually is breathed out as a gas, unless it's used uh, to build compounds in your body. But if it's used for cellular respiration to make ATP, you breathe out that food in gaseous carbon dioxide form. The oxygen that you breathe in in the gaseous form actually comes out as water vapor. Uh, if you, you know, when you can steam up a mirror by uh, breathing on it, that's your, your water vapor. That's the output that came from the oxygen, picked up some hydrogens, and comes out when you breathe it out as water vapor. The nice things about these is that overall, they actually cycle the same way in photosynthesis. And you probably know this as well. So plants take in carbon dioxide, and that's what they make their food from. So they put carbon dioxide molecules together and build uh, three carbon compounds called G3P. Those can get converted into glucose. They can get converted into sucrose then and starches and build the molecules of the plant. It also provides the plant with its own food, or the algae or cyanobacterium, so it doesn't actually have to eat. Whereas you see that the organisms that are doing cellular respiration that don't do photosynthesis, they're going to have to ingest or absorb the carbon compound. All right, so the water, since it's cycling, the water is going to go back to oxygen. So the water that plants take in through their roots is then converted into oxygen gas and released from their cells. Some of that oxygen will be used again in the plants and cellular respiration and back to water and so forth. So the thing you noticed about the autotrophs is they actually do both of these processes. So they're independent. So even though we depend on plants for making the carbon compounds, plants don't depend on us for um, carbon dioxide. Sometimes people under the impression that, oh, well, plants give us oxygen and we give them carbon dioxide, which is true, but plants also give themselves carbon dioxide. So plants, I mean, if all the animals died out, while it would be a problem for pollination and things like that, as far as molecular cycling and energetic cycling, it's not going to be a, uh, affect the plants, the cyanobacteria or the uh, algae protists. Um, we need to go the uh, energy conversion, so we already know that chemical energy in food is what comes out, and you probably know in photosynthesis, the energy that's going into it is the form of light energy or solar energy. It's a form of kinetic energy, and that's what's going to be going in, converting into the energy in the bonds of the food. To be thorough, let's put in what processes do these conversions. We'll learn about them in detail later. But um, we'll start with these photosynthesis. The water comes in, oxygen comes out through a process called the light reactions. Sometimes they abbreviate that LR. And the conversion of carbon dioxide to carbon compounds is in the Kelvin cycle. The nice thing about this is the carbons, Kelvin cycle, carbon compound, it's all the C's. Um, going together. The conversion of the carbon compound back to carbon dioxide is another cycle in cellular respiration called the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. Sometimes I abbreviate that CAC. And then there's also a process called oxidation of pyruvate. P-Y-R-U-V-A-T-E, that is going to take the carbon compounds back to carbon dioxide as well. So that's the cycles with the carbons. Then the oxygen going back to water, that is through a process called oxidative phosphorylation. And that's a combination of the electron transport chain and then a process called chemiosmosis which basically is when you make your ATP. Okay, so I think that overall is your setup of your photosynthesis and cell respiration, what kinds of organisms do that, and how it fits together in the big picture.